there's never been an ice cream like it. Alright. Every time I cut back after a commercial, I sink lower and lower in my seat. Soon I will be in full recline. Cities of Sigma. Cities of Sigma are male. Battle traits. Your movement. Um, move three. That's good. If it's human, you can pick an additional one. Cool. That's good. This turn... Oh, only one per turn, though. So, one of any of these four. And then your subfactions give you a free one, right? Um... Strike them down. Add one to hit rolls for the combat attacks. Or add one to attack characteristic. Add one attacks, good, on the charge. It's great. You need a hero nearby, though. Holy 12, you got the hero auras. And in this edition, you'd want to play two heroes max, probably. That sucks. Like, it's, it's a good bonus, though. All these bonuses are good. Target has strike last and ward five for the rest of the turn. Huge. Each time he uses a shoot, if all its attacks target the same enemy after the ability to resolve or die, equal or less than the number of models in the unit that were slain by shooting attacks this phase. Enemy has strike last. Neat. Any shooting phase. So all these are any. Cool. Move three. Strike last on shot target, maybe. If the target is Dwarden, subtract one from hit rolls. Okay, I'm on it. Minus one to be hit of Dwarf. Good. Um, technically, these are meh. Well, no, not even. This one attacks on the charge for one unit a turn. It's actually good for free. For literal free. Um, I'm calling them good because I know in the future the sub-factions will tell me that you can get a free one every turn. Uh, never mind. Damn, where did you get that from? Was I making that up in my head? I thought the preview article said that one of, that the battle formations were like, hey, you get one of these auto. You can use them as many times as you have heroes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, then these are better. I must have been... Yeah, I was thinking Eometrica and all that stuff from Lumineth. Yeah. I was thinking Luminath. Um, one per hero per turn. In which case, they are good. Uh, Subfactions. So, the... The Yawn Bringer Crusade, am I right? The Dong Bringer Crusade. Add two move characteristic friendly to Sigmar units in the first battle round only. I don't like that. I mean, it, adding two to the move characteristic of your entire army is sweet and you can get into position and stuff. But I hate shit that's like first battle round and then your thing does nothing for the rest of the whole game. I, I don't like that. Um. Boo. 
Add three of the ranged characters and ranged weapons used by friendly city Sigmar units. Uh, meh. If your shooting is great, then meh plus. Uh, if you have fortified position, you start the game with it. In addition, the first battle round, minus one from one rolls to attack target friendly cities units. I'll with it. Ahem, friendly. Plus one the casting rolls. That's the one you think. Alright, subfaction's bad, but you take the plus one the cast uh, wizards army wide, that one's good. No, you don't. You can fit maybe one wizard in the army. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Well, what do you even take? These all suck. Uh, hey, I'm not sure which one you take, but whatever you take, I'm not impressed. Uh, so far, the worst of factions, by far. You take the shooting one because fusors are 120 points for 10. That's really cheap. All right. All right, terror traits. If fusors are 10 for 120 points, they must be bad. <laughs> no offense. But it's like Arcanaut Company are cheap, but there's a reason. Master of Ballistics. On a friendly city, Sigma unit uses all attack command and shooting phase while it is within its unit's combat range. Add one to wound rolls for the unit's shooting attacks. This effect is in addition to the effect of all out attack. Okay. AOA gives plus one to wound also. Nice, maybe. That's nice, maybe. Um, grizzled Veteran. If the unmodified wound roll for the attack targets the unit is 1 to 3, the attack fails, attack the sequence ends. Okay, it's the opposite of the IDK one, except worse. Um, In the shooting phase, not combat. Yeah. Oh, I just, I didn't write it. Um. I didn't write it. And Fury Temper. If this unit charged, you can reroll charge rolls friendly cities while they're within 18. Old Beast Claw one, Beast Claw one that isn't really good unless you have a boss ass monster hero. Eighteen inch reroll. Meh. Anti ogre. <laughs> Um, I want to see if you have, like, some sick-ass shooting unit or something that would make this one better. I still think you might just take this one. Um, um worse versus non-monsters. Arte Facts of Power Arts. 
Sacred Tome. If this unit is not a priest, it has priest one. Big. If it's a wizard, it cannot use spell abilities and prayer abilities in the same phase. Why? Stop it. <laughs> Choose fun. Consider choosing fun in the future. Um... Uh, glimmering. Each phase you can reroll one hit, roll one wound roll, and one save roll for this unit. Um, Brazier of Holy Flame. Big friendly non hero city Sigmar infantry unit that is not in combat, holy within 12. Return up to D3 slain models. End of any turn. So each turn you're bringing guys back to life. Non-hero cities. Breezer Holy Flame regen D3 dudes who aren't in combat each turn melee range. You choose this like 100% of the time. Surely a bunch of your heroes aren't a wizard or a priest and this allows you to possibly take them. So it's great. Even if you can't put it on a wizard, whatever, it's still good. I share your pain. I had the same thing last edition and it wasn't, and it sucked. Uh... Good one, too bad. Well, I mean, the brazier, you could... You can use the brazier. It does something. It, it's not even bad. It's not It's not even bad. You got your shooter guys, and they've taken some damage. You can bring them back. That, that can add up. That can add up. If you can become a priest for free, I think your artifacts are good. Spell lore. Um, Elemental Light Honing. Uh, enemy 18, D3 Mortals, then roll die for each other enemy unit within the target's combat, 4 up D3 to that. Okay. It's like Ionis' thing, kinda. Speed of the Twin-Tailed Comet. Hold you in 12. Until your next turn, add one of the number of dice rolls when making charge rolls. Alright. It's great. And then this one. Enemy unit within 18. Starting next turn, subtract one for tax characteristic male weapons. Good debuff. Debuff cloud. It's good. 18. Your spells are great. I wonder if your wizards are great. 36 charge spell is bad because there's nothing you want to charge with. If that's true, I'm going to scroll back up and put a little parenthetical next to that spell. 
There's a whole ass army in this game that doesn't want to charge with even one thing. Are we... Are we... <laughs> cities of doom? I'm not saying we're not. Uh, Wrath and Ruin. Roll six dice if the chanting roll was eight, roll nine instead. For each five of click one mortal damage to the target if three or more damage points are allocated to the target as a result of his die rolls. Ignore positive modifiers, save rolls for the target. Trash. Confused ogre noises. <laughs> um, unfaltering aim. Big friendly see Sigmar priest. Uh, holy twelve. Add one to hit rolls for target shooting attacks for the rest of the turn. In addition, if the chanting rolls ten, add one to wound rolls as well. Okay. and steel. Minus one for wound rolls tax target that unit until the start of your next turn. In addition, add one to save rolls. All right. See, I gotta see what all this stuff goes on. Oh wait, oh this deals a five. Meh plus. Four if dwarf. That's better. There. We'll just improve these a little bit. Unflattering aim and oats and meal. Uh, now we're in the absolute units. Talia Vedra. Please be good. 15 health, 12 move, 4 up save. Warmaster, Unique, Hero, Monster, Fly, Ward 6. Not a looker. Not exactly a looker. Weapon of Office. 6 attacks, 3s and 4s, 1, 2. Okay. Inf uh, Infernadines, Leon and Jaws. 3 attacks, 3s and 2s, 2, 3. anti monster plus and Rends, alright. Infernadines, Scorpid, Stinga. Three attacks, fours and twos, three, D3 plus three, okay. Small number of high impact attacks, I suppose. Unparalleled Tactician. When you use an off a car's order ability, you can pick an additional friendly city unit holy within 12 to be the target of it. Okay, so you can, essentially you can target yourself, like, perhaps there's more to it, but baseline, it's like, 
every order you use, you get to also use on yourself. Um, lead from the front. I don't know if I'd want to. Um, if this unit is in combat, pick up to three other friendly cities, wholly within 12 of it to be the targets. I don't... Do you, how many do you want to be in combat with her, charging in? For each target, you can return a number of slain models to the unit with a combined health characteristic of up to three. Okay. Paralyzing Venom, pick an enemy monster. They might strike last. What does she cost? Ahem. Three ten, okay. Some Huskard on Stonehorn cost, I guess. I mean, she's better than one of those, but that doesn't take much. I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to see more. I feels meh. Ponta Flex uh, Zenestra. Voice of the God King. This unit can use Unbind as if it had Wizard. Could it just be a Wizard, though? I guess it's already a Priest, too. Four Up Ward as well. Vessel of Sigmar. Pick one of the following effects. To apply, pick up the two different effects if the chanting roll is 10 up. Add two of the move characteristic friendly humans if they're holier than 12. Friendly humans have a ward of 5 up. You know, racist? Unit. Roll d3 for each enemy wizard and priest on the battlefield to open flip amount of mortal damage. Uh, auto include? Any auto includers? Pontifex is a cool 240. Hey, alright. Um. Seems good. <laughs> Next up, Flagellance. One health, six up save. Castigating flails and clubs. Two attacks, fours and fours, oh one. So you're telling me they're chaff, huh? Yeesh. Each time a model in this unit is slain by a combat attack and that model was in combat, add one to the roll. If it's wholly within 12 of... Specifically Pontifex Zenestra. On a 5 up, inflict the mortal damage. Okay, so these are zombies. Literal zombies, right? Okay. What do these cost? 100 points for 30? <laughs> I mean, they got murder rolls. That That's great on chaff, right? You want murder rolls on your chaff if you can help it. 
because that's always good. Um, hundred for ten. All right. Yeah, human zombie elements. They explode when they die and are chaff. Both of those things together is always good. Uh, the models aren't. And they get a bonus to the roll if they're next to the auto-include lady. Hey, alright. Uh, free guild mason. On griffin. 15, 4. 5, 3s and 4s, 1, 2. 1, 3 on the charge. 6, 4s and 2s, 2, 3, okay. You declared the redeploy command. If you roll 1 to 3, you can use a value of 4 instead. Cool. Yo, kind of cool. I, I like stuff like this. This is cool. Piercing Blood Roar. Roll die for each target. On a 4 up the target, can I use commands? Whatever. Uh, nope. Regal Marsh All and Relic Envoy. Uh, five, three, five. Dueling Pistols. Shooting Combat. Heirloom Warhammer. Yo, that is an Heirloom Warhammer. Kind of nice looking. Master Forge Longsword. Silver Short Sword. This unit is armed with one of the following. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Only one of the cool things. Besides. Nope, okay, it, it a actually just one. Dueling pistol and short sword. This unit's relic envoy is a token. Add three to the control scores of other friendly humans while they are wholly within 12 of this unit. Maybe this is the type of army you would care about that. Um, attendant relic envoy. There's a great on hour. Take a friendly city sigmar human wholly within 18. Well, this unit's Relic Envoy next to the target. If this unit's Relic Envoy is currently next to a different friendly unit, move it. Okay. Well, the target has a Relic Envoy next to it. It can be picked to be the target of a order, even if it's not wholly within 12. If this unit is destroyed, remove its Relic Envoy. This is good. Free Guild Marshal and... What, what does this thing look like? Is this thing cool looking? Hold up. Yo. All right. It is cool looking. This guy's cool. Make him a priest. I really like the order thing. Um. Yeah, this guy's cool. He sends out the boy. That's fun. Regal Cavalier Marshal. Oh, is this the guy on the horse that looks so sick? Please be good. Oh my god, please be good. Ah. This guy looks so great. Please don't suck. 7310. Dragoon Pistol. Whatever. Master Forged Cavalier Sword. It's alright. Or Horses Steel Shod Hooves. Alright. 
for Sigmar Charge, I had one of Charge Rolls for this unit, and for Friendly Free Guild Cavalier units, well, they're holier than 12 with this unit. Okay. Um, run down the foe. If this unit charged this turn, pick a friendly city Sigmar human cavalry unit that charged this turn and hold within 12 of this. This unit and the target have strike first. Only once per battle, huh? I, I'm so sad. Uh, even if cavaliers are good, this guy isn't. That's very disappointing. I'm going to make special note of it. Okay. He wins on fours. He's bad. I don't care about his tax. He could have zero tax and he could still be great. However, he's not. <laughs> um, why would you ever take him? I don't know. He can't fight. Uh, his buffs aren't good. And one of them's once per game and not good. It, it's a mystery. Why, why am I here just to suffer? Alright, Free Guild Command Core. This thing here, is this a hero? Free Guild Command Corps? The Great Herald, War Surgeon, and Soul Shepherd are each armed with an assortment of weapons. The Arc Knight is armed with a Sigmaride Great Weapon. The Whisper Blade is armed with an Enchanted Rapier. The Mascot Gargoylean is armed with a Gargoylean's Bite. This is the Dungeons and Dragon Party, the Command Squad. That's cool. Can you be good? This is sweet. Um, command core. Three health, four up save. Uh, it is six men. Once per battle round, army, any hero phase. Free guild adjutants. Pick a friendly AC Sigmar human, only within 12. For the rest of the turn, the first time the target uses a redeploy, rally, covering fire, counter charge. Pick another human within 12 that also gets that. Okay. It's kind of alright. More than just kind of. The Marshals Retinue. While any free guild, Marshal, and Relic Envoy units are wholly within this unit's combat range, both this unit and those units get Ward 5 up. Sick. Hey, you actually want to take this guy, maybe. Right? Like, you maybe, you maybe might take that thing. If so, cool. Still spend CO. Why? <laughs> oh. Well, that, that's kind of shit. It's still good, maybe. Um. No, yeah, I mean, you, you're going to have, like, two shooter units right next to each other. Maybe you do that. You could rally two. You, you could. You could still do it. it it's kind of weird that they make you pay for it again, though. I like ward on this guy if you're playing that guy. Once battle army reaction opponent declared a command for a unit within 12. They have to spend another, otherwise it's lost. Alright, that's super annoying. Sounds good to me. It's good, but not on counter charge. I don't think you can afford to counter charge half the time. That would cost, what, four? Do you have four available? <laughs> Look, your opponent's playing, like, group hug EDH. They got, like, six auxiliary, and they're just, like, throwing command points at you every battle round. Then, then it's super sick. I kind of like these guys. They got, like, decent stats. They're kind of big. 
They got decent attacks. There's six of them. They do some cool stuff. They don't take up a hero slot. I mean, maybe. Uh, what do they cost? One ninety, okay. Uh yeah, it's too much. One ninety's a lot for a five up ward on the relic guy. I guess they get a award too, right? Fusil Major. Uh, long Fusil. 24 inch range, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2. Crit auto wound. Anti hero rend. Warhawk's Mace. Take an unit that was targeted by the shooting unit's attacks. Add one to hit rolls. Nice. You got a lot of random, like, hit rolls in this army. You're going to have to figure out how many you want and from what source. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a tracer man. And then there's some fortify thing that I don't understand. He looks cool. Very silly, you know. Basically give up uh, movement for a negative one to rend. Yeah, you could do that once you're already on an objective, maybe. You know? Notable Fusil Major can be an additional hero for some other human heroes. Good. Good to hear. Otherwise, you're going to have some trouble choosing, I think. He's cool. I guess he could be a priest. Um, uh, Battle Mage. Pick a spell ability that this unit can use for the rest of the battle. I had one of the casting rolls for that. Cool. That's cool. And then all the different cool looking weirdos. Okay. Uh, plus on the cast, a spell of choice. He's cool. If this was a previous edition of the game, you would always take this guy. But the way battalions work now, you probably don't, and you're very sad. Or maybe you do, because you have, like, no wizards. Maybe you still have to. I'm not sure. Um, damn. I have started to build some armies. I hate the battalion system of 4th. I already hate it. Do not want or like... Um, Battle Mage on Griffin. Uh, oh, here's another guy who outdamages the Eidolon of the Storm. <laughs> this fucking, this fucking EverQuest model. <laughs> Wizard 1. Gourish Ferocity. On a 2-up add one damage characteristic of its stuff. If it targets a monster, okay. Battalion means regiment building? Yeah, because the regiment building is essentially the same as what battalions used to be. They just kind of changed the n name around. 
I liked the idea of the new regiments. And then I saw their full rules, and I'm like, okay, I still think... And then I tried to build one army for 35 seconds. I'm like, okay, I hate these. <laughs> okay. Um, Battle Mage on Celestial Hurricaneum. You think regiments are good for new players? I think Spearhead is good enough for new players. We have given them a lot. Haven't we given them enough? We gave them Spearhead. Portents of Battle. Once per turn, pick up the D3 Visible Friendly City Sigmar Human Units, Holy Within 12. Add one to hit rolls. A lot of add one to hit rolls in this army. You know, if you if you just gave me this Battle Tome, or this Index, and didn't tell me the core rules, I would think that they let you stack hit bonuses like in the old days again. Instead, they just give you like a million different ways to get it. I suppose maybe that's fine. That's not even bad. Right? It's not about taking all of the hit bonuses. It's about getting your plus one to hit in a bun whatever specific way you feel like. It's like, okay, I need to check the box of getting plus one to hit. So here's five units that do it for you. So you can pick whatever way you want to, and then maybe you're happy, right? Maybe that's it. It's not even a bad thing. Um... Pretty much where Halo is, the moment you realize that it kills the utility of minor heroes with niche rolls, you started to hate it. Yeah, it, it murders that. Yeah, that's for sure. One army composition is more restricted, you need to have redundancy and buff application. That too. Never a, never a bad thing. The more redundancy you have, the less linchpin your whole army is, right? Uh, and also, debuffs are uncapped, and I've seen a lot of minus ones to hit in this game so far, and more than a few minus one to wounds. Storm of Schmuck. Storm of She mm, on my tech. Oh, never mind. Um, make a number D3 rolls equal to the current battle round number. For each two up, inflict the amount of mortal damage on the target equal to the roll. Once per turn army shooting phase. So this thing like ramps up in power. It's kind of, this thing is like neat. It has to be within 12 though, but it like ramps up in power over the course of the whole game. Technically a wizard. Uh, huh. Some of this stuff is kind of neat. Battle Mage and Luminarch of Hish. Searing Beam. Pick a point each time this unit attacks with its Searing Beam of Light. Pick a point on the battlefield within range to be the target. If the attack scores a hit, draw a straight line between it. Alright. You might hit more stuff with things like this now, because a lot of buffs are um, combat range with your hero. Ahem. Everybody gets a 6-up ward around this thing, just like the old days. Free guild steel helms. These guys are funny looking. 1 health, 4 up save. Bad at fighting. But they consecrate the land. The scene is contesting that is not contested by enemies. Roll die, three up, it's consecrated. Um, well, each model in the friendly cities of Sigmar human unit is contesting a consecrated objective. That unit has a five up ward. If your opponent gains control of it, it is no longer consecrated. I kind of like how these guys um, put a pentagram on the ground, but then they can fuck off. And as long as any other human is chilling on that, they get the five up ward. That's kind of neat. Uh, Fusiliers. If you're fortified, you're 18, 2, 4, 4, 1, 1. And if you're mobile, you're 12, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1. 
Black Powder Squire. If this unit is a Black Powder Squire token, each time he uses a shoot, if a Squire is on the battlefield, you can reroll one hit roll. If the hit roll rerolled is one, remove it. It's a very minor effect. Um, 18 inch range is decent. Their shots are terrible, but their Freegled Fusiliers are essentially Arcanaut Company, right? Ten guys bad at shooting, short range, except Fusilers can dig in and get 18. And Arcanaut, I don't know, they can climb in a boat or something. <laughs> and these are supposedly cheap, right? Minus one incoming rend, whatever. Yeah, 21 range with a shoot formation, true. You can get a lot of bonuses on these two. How much do these cost? 120 for 10? Alright, so we... So, for the next six months, we spam like... Like 80 Fusiliers. And then the next points change... Start wringing our hands, like, oh, yeah, oh no. You wish Fusilers were multiracial instead of all human? I agree, except on all of the new kits. That would have been really cool. Got like a dwarven sniper in there, or like a dwarven dude with a shotgun, an elf with a sniper rifle, and then like a human with a big tower shield and a rifle. And stuff. I think they should have been mixed units. I would have really gone for the whole melting pot thing. I think it would have been cool. It's so fucking boring when Every single fantasy thing is like the elves hate the dwarves in every fucking thing, always. Can we do anything new? Anyway, I don't care. I don't care actually that much. They can't move and shoot 18. Correct. Yeah, they have to... You put them on an objective and they just chill there like a living turret for the entire game. expect Warhammer to change that? Yeah. Uh, they actually did, technically. That's what Cities of Sigmar is about, in the lore, anyway. In a certain sense. I'm asking them to come up with one interesting idea in 50 years. <laughs> Just ripping off Tolkien and throwing it into a single country of Europe, you know, per race, was perhaps, like, interesting in 1981, but... Uh, any army is looking command point hungry enough to want to max out at 1950? I've seen a lot of people building towards 1950. It doesn't seem like people are bending over backwards. It's just... The first battle round, remember. So it's not like humongously important. It's not like not playing auxiliary, which you just never do, right? Um, but if you find yourself at 1950, then do it. A lot of armies, the cheapest thing in it is like 100. So you might not be able to fine tune. Ahem. Ahem. Um, oh, you can still play the ones that don't have the wizards on them. Got it. Combat attacks. Uh, 
And so this thing is not a hero. You could just play it. And Luminar gets the thing. Searing Beam of Light. Free Guild Cavaliers. These guys look so sick. Now, they're humans, which means they have to hit on fours and wound on fours. That was the rule. They went back through all the war scrolls in the whole game, and they're like, if you're a human, you're on fours and fours, because that's a, that's a trained human, you know. Uh, you have, that's it. And so you're going to have to get good with a bunch of buffs from somewhere. And I see a lot of hit bonuses. Charge plus one damage, sure. Increasing three is ten. Devastating charge. Um, or die for each model in this unit, which is five. Potentially ten. Do five more to wounds on the charge. Free Guild Cavaliers have the best impact hits in the game. Is this true? Uh, how much do these guys cost again? One seventy for five. They do three damage on average on the charge on buffed versus four up. So one seventy per five, which is three forty. Three forty per ten. And when you charge with 10, you do straight 5 mortal wounds. And then you do a shitload of attacks. Maybe I'm comparing these guys to Mornfang, and I shouldn't be, but that sounds good. Iron Weld Great Cannon. Is this thing good? Cannonball. 24, 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, uh, D3 plus 2. Or, Grape Shot. 5, 3, 3, 1, 2. Okay. 8, 4, up 3. This thing looks cool. Shot and Shell. Each time this unit uses a shot ability, if it is a fortified, pick either Cannonball or Grape Shot. If it's not fortified, it has to be Grape Shot. Okay. And then you fortify it. Iron World Great Cannon. Um, does this thing cost 240 points? That's my guess. My guess, Iron World Great Cannon without looking it up, 240. What do you think? What is it? One thirty. <laughs> it's one thirty. Okay, the reason I guessed two forty is because that's what the iron blaster costs, and it has essentially the a very similar profile. All right. I mean, the limit here is your drops, not necessarily points, but... Um... Oh, 
Not bad. Um, the reason it's so cheap is because if it moves, uh, well, I don't know if it can technically ever move. Our scientists are still working on it, but it might not even have a move value. Uh, you see the Iron Blaster isn't completely useless in combat? I think it is. But I'm comparing it to other Ogre stuff. So my opinion is skewed of how good something is in combat. Um, you know, you look over here and it's like literal nothing, right? Uh, Wilder Corpse Hunters. Hunting crossbow and arbalast. Each is armed with a hunting crossbow and hunting weapons. The champion is armed with a trailhound's ferocious bite in addition to their other weapons. Eleven guys. How strange. How curious. Two, four, four, one, one, and fifteen. Um, deployment phase. You can move right away. Neat. This unit is not visible enemy units more than twelve, while it is affected by the cover terrain ability. In addition, add one to hit rolls for this unit shooting tax while is wholly within three of a terrain feature. Okay. Yeah, it's the Scooby Gang. Steam Tank Commander. Two up, say? Steam Cannon. Steam Gun. Commander's Rifle. Okay. Look at his attacks. Roll 2d6. If the roll is less than the number of damage points this unit has, inflict d3 mortal damage on this unit. Otherwise, pick one. Wait. If the roll is less than the number of damage points units have, so... If it gets damaged, it becomes more damaged, maybe. Um. Otherwise... This unit can use run and still shoot and or charge. Cool. Or add three to the attacks characteristic of the steam gun. Damn. I wish that was any other single weapon on the whole profile than the steam gun, but alright. Division commander. Pick up the two friendly steam tank units. For the rest of the turn, add one to hit rolls for shooting attacks made by this unit and by each target. Once per battle, blast away. Cool. I just think he's neat. What neat little guy. Steam gun is also the hardest to buff at a native 2 up to hit. Yeah, but it's just like... It's so shit. Um, force to wound. No rend. Rando attacks. Sometimes something will happen, I suppose. But these aren't very plentiful on number of attacks, but something might happen. 340? Okay. I'm starting to lose touch with reality as far as what things should cost, you know? I gotta play some more games, I think. You went to eat? Did you miss something hype? No, we're looking at Cities of Sigmar. <laughs> um, sorry, that was mean. I didn't mean it. Steam Tonk. Galen Ven Denst. Double damage characters against wizards, priests, and manifestations. That's fun. Uh, you have your little daddy-daughter thing, your heroes... I don't think you're ever being taken. Moving on. Uh, old world model. Can't wait for the dwarves to get their cities refresh. Pick a friendly non-hero city Sigmar Dwarden unit that is not used to fight. They can fight, but no buff. Ancestral Grudge Bearer. The enemy unit in your opponent's army to bear a grudge against. That's fun. 
You can pick an enemy unit that is in reserve. Cool. That's cool. For those of the battle, add one to wound rolls for combat attacks made by all dwarfs. Let's go. And this is deployment phase, right? So if this guy dies, I think you still just have this. Cool. That's fun. He looks cool too. I like the look of him. I like the look of him. Okay, now make it a priest. Rune Larad. Priest 1. It can unbind. He no longer has plus 2 to unbind, though. He used to have plus 2 to unbind. That's sick. Forge Fire, 5. Pick a Dwarden in a Holy Thin, 12. Starting so next turn, add 1 to rend characters to get the target's melee weapons. Used to be plus 1 rend, period. You'd put it on the Blaze Masters. That was too good. Sad. In addition, if the chanting roll was 10, pick another. Okay. Damn, that sucks. But maybe you can add Ren to some a million dwarves or something. These dudes not looking great anymore. Long beards, three armor, one health, four move. Add to the control scores friendly, Dwarden, yeah, whatever. Hammers. While any friendly cities of Sigmar, Dwarden, infantry heroes are wholly within this unit's combat range, both this and those have Ward 5. This is good, actually. Two attacks a model, force and threes, one, two. Rune Lord, maybe Ren, two. Ten duids. So you're, you got a, you got a, a three up save, a five up ward, and forty attacks at probably threes and threes, one two. It's like silly. It's kind of silly. Iron Borkers, Drakefire Pistols, Super Short Range. These guys used to have an anti-magic thing, right? If I recall. Like a once per game grudge torpedo or something? It's been a long time. Grom Real Shield Wall. Well, this unit is affected by the Hold the Lion Officer's ability. It has a ward of 4 up instead of 5. Big. Huge. Iron Drakes, these used to be the best shooters in the army a million quadrillion years ago. Iron Drakes. Oh, these had the Grudge Hammer Torpedo. These guys had the once per game, like, crack grenade thing. Like, some, I could have sworn they had a once per game, like, toss or whip a grenade at somebody or something like that. Anyway. Um, Iron Drakes. Drake Guns 15, 1 through 3, 1, 1. Anti Infantry Rand. Cool. Grudge Hammer Torpedo. Once per turn, your shooting phase, Cinder Blast Bomb. If this unit is not in combat, pick a visible enemy unit within six. Roll die on a three up, inflict amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. Alright. So, like, four, five, or six mortal wounds is a lot, but not being in combat and also being six away is unlikely. Yeah, these are the guys you would use to teleport. A block of what? 60 of or 30 of or some 30 of, I mean. Cool. <laughs> Look at this dude. Dwarves are so funny. This fucking dude. Look at this shit. <laughs> He's the cogsmith. He's got firearms. Direct the gyrocopters. Once per turn army, your hero phase. Pick up to three visible friendly gyrocopter or gyro bomber units. Holy is an 18. I'll die for each. On a three up, add one to hit rolls. Okay. Gyrocopter. This shit is like a little too silly for me. I'm going to be honest. 
And these are kind of dumb looking, but that's just me. Guild bombs, roll a d3 and a two up inflict amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. You're flying with move 12 over something. The cog -k. The gyro cog -ter. And then the gyro bomber. If one is called the gyrocopter and one is called the gyro bomber, and they both have bombs. On a two up, inflict amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. Drop it all. Make two rolls of d3 for each two up, inflict amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. Then roll d3 for each unit, friend, and enemy within the target's combat range that does not have fly. And then do it again. Drop them off. And then the sorceress, who used to be one of the better wizards in the army because she could sacrifice people, get a bonus to it. Pick a friendly Seed of Sigmar Elf. Well, within six, add one of the casting rolls for this unit for this to turn, then roll and die. I have four up one model and target unit slain. Okay. Her bonus is much lower, but she still does that technically. Word of Pain. I'm going to three up subtract one from hit rolls and wound rolls for your target attacks till the start of your next. Pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit to be the target. Yeah, I think she, I think she's gonna die, one way or another. Good try though. Sorceress on blank dragon. D three plus three attacks. What are you doing? Just say five. Just write the number five. Do we have to do this? Ahem. What do we think of this roll of d3 on a 2-up deal damage equal to the roll stuff? I like it because it's one roll to do something. It's just a time saver. It saves time. If you're going to randomly produce d3 mortal wounds anyway somehow, with a chance of failure, you just roll a d3 one time, point to it, and move on. It's like, you could have rolled two dice, but you rolled one. I think it's a little lazy that every single ability in the entire game is that. They might have, they might have overused it, perhaps, but I think it makes sense and it's reasonable. Um, I don't like how it gives so many things a 1 in 3 chance of failure, which is a very high failure chance in my opinion, for a lot of the abilities that happen to get it, so I don't like that part of it. But it is a time saver, and I appreciate the streamline attempt. So I, in other words, my feelings are mixed. Oh, she still has the little move thing that you used to have in your battalion. Eat on life force. Pick an enemy unit in combat. D3, 2 up, inflict them on mortal damage equal to the roll. If any enemy models are slain, place a dark sorcery token next to this unit for the rest of the battle to a max of 3 tokens. Add 1 to cast for each dark sorcery token. Neat. Wizard 1. Finally, no longer has a 5 up save too. She finally got her 4 up save after all these years. After all these years, she finally did it. She got that 4-up save. Dead Spears. Dorkling Spears, am I right? Anyway, if this unit did not charge, add one to wound rolls, whatever. Hey. Looking forward to that refresh. Can we can we continue with the cities? Can we get some city dwarfs, city elves, um, black guard, these dudes? Want your friendly city of Sigmar elf infantry? Yeah, all right. Ward guys, they are the guard. 
War Hydra. This awful thing. Gugh. Five up, eight inch move monster thing. If you don't kill it in one go, though, it will heal six. Um, which one is 300 points? The Sorceress. I just, I can't imagine anyone is actually playing a Dark Elf army in this day and age. Isn't everyone just simply waiting for a refresh or to see if they're kicked out of heaven and fall all the way down to earth and now they're in old world, you know? Isn't that what like Cities of Sigmar Dark Elf players are doing? Bleak Swords have crit two hits. They got a bunch of attacks, kinda. Three, you know. Executioners, they used to have crit two mortals. If it charged, you get uh, crit on a five of them instead of six. Neat. <laughs> These dudes. They kinda hold up almost. Dark shards. Three attacks if they haven't moved. So get within 15. 60 shots. <laughs> Potentially twos and fours. Anti infantry rend one. An actual million dark shards. Hmm. Freak spawn chariot. Dread load. I wonder if they were told, like, don't make the Dark Elves too good. It'd be kind of cruel to make people buy these now. Seems kind of fun. Cities really hate the new army comp rules, don't they? I mean, not every army is supposed to be one drop or two drop. If you can't fit it in, then you gotta lean lean all the other way, right? All right. Either I play a suboptimal army in the extreme and try to fight for drops, or we. Just lean into it and be like, okay, I'll make the most powerful army I can, and I will just always get out dropped, and that's it. All right. I kind of hope that strategy works for somebody, or maybe it's even a big thing. Because in a certain sense, if that strategy doesn't work, then I think the regiment system is kind of borked. Uh, three health, four up, save, twelve move. Dark Riders. Five Duids. Yo, did they just all get repeater crossbows? 4401. Crit two hits. 23411. Charge one damage. Hold up. You can enemy unit in combat with this unit to be the target. 3 up, inflict D3. Can immediately use retreat. End of any turn. Hold up, cross-referencing for a second. 
What did these guys have again? 3-3. Three, 3-4-4-1-1. Three. Three, four, four, one, one. Charge 1 damage. Uh, really good impact hits. So, 3-10-3. Three, 3-4-4-1-1-2. Three, three, four, four, one, one, well, one, really good impacts. Versus... Human keyword, which is relevant, I guess. Versus... 312, but only 4 instead of 3. A bunch of repeater crossbow shots that have crit 2 hits. Only 2 attacks instead of 3, but better to hit roll. And they have a... If they live through combat, they can do a mortal wound and retreat instead of really good impact hits. So... Um... They're like kind of comparable to the human ones. Depends on what you care about. I think the repeater crossbow shots are kind of cool. Plus and minus in the rest of the ways. I play Beast Claw, so I, I respect the impact hits, I think. Mm -hmm. You do kind of like the idea of needing to develop a suboptimal army in order to get one drop. It makes it a bit cost rather than auto. I don't think almost anyone's going to do one drop. It feels like everybody's on the two drop plan from what I've been seeing, but you know, I don't know what the real competitive players are doing, really. Retreat at EOT means more free pot shots next turn. Yeah, but I don't trust them to stay alive if they're in combat. I expect them to die. And then end of turn comes around and I see them off the table next to all my other casualties. Um, to me, end of turn is not a guarantee. It's like, a, oh, wow, I lived. Oh, cool, I get to do something, that kind of thing. These are also 30 points cheaper than the human and calf. Well, that makes sense. They're worse. But not that much worse. They're just kind of different, you know? Knight spawn knights. Sorry, Drake spawn knights. Knight spawn knights. Uh, 3310, barbed lands 23412. Uh, Alright, better mounts than the other two guys. For the rest of the turn, add one to the tax characters of the units, bites while it is in combat without any enemy units, or while it is in combat with any enemy units that has model slain. Okay. Your mounts are kind of alright. Compared to the other two guys, right? Assassin, do they still have the goofy, like, stay inside of a, a unit thing? Well, this unit is within the combat range of a friendly infantry unit that has five or more models. Yeah, it's not... Oh, it's not visible. You don't actually, like, put it in there. Got it. Strike first of it charged. Six attacks, threes and fours, one, two. Anti-hero crit. It's sad that it has to be infantry. I would have put it... Well, no, you're not putting it in. It's just like standing next to it. All right, why do you exist? Fleet Master. The, one of the singular two, or one of the two guys that are technically uh, Black Ark. Had one tax characteristic. Okay, cool. Big buff. Crypt Mortal and big buff. Black Arc Corsairs. Repeater, Handbow, and Vicious Blades. This is both. Melee weapons. <laughs> Each time you make an unmodified save, roll of six. Alright. Shoot in combat as well. I think that's the only two. Oh, I forgot about the Scourge Runner Chariot. How could I forget? There's three. There's three. Got a big old harpoon. Some hook spears. I don't want to hit and wound rolls the target monsters. Got it. Got it. Dude, these are horses with their huge teeth. Charybdias. 
Um, I think they're... Hold on. Those guys are actually worth mentioning, right? Dark Riders. Um, Dork Riders. Cheaper than... What are the other guys called? Uh, 5G Cav. If you want a bunch of shots instead of best impacts. Also worth save. A little faster though. Different keyword depending on what you care about. Alchemite Warforger. This dude, I like this guy. And you have to pay the elf hero tax. Oh, I didn't look. Is that how it fully works? If so, then I guess you are. I guess you are just a million drops in this army. Um, five five tong stave. Rune crucible. Pick a friendly city sigmar human human unit. Hold you than twelve. On a three up, add one to save rolls for the unit until starting next turn. Excellent. Wizard 1, 2, let's go! Dude, okay, this guy's sick. This guy is sick. He is the one. He is also a Lord Castellant, which they just retired. And so it's the first Stormcast Eternal that did the opposite, right? Normally you're a hero and you become a Stormcast. This guy is a retired Stormcast. He went back to being a person and he retired and became uh, the Alchemite Warforger. He used to be a Castellant. Cool. The Smith. This guy is sick. Um, Callus and Toll. Double the damage characters against Wiz Reds. Yeah, we got a lot of like witch hunters that do double damage against wizards and priests and manifestations and stuff. I think that's neat. If this unit has two models and would be automatically destroyed, it is not. Instead, one model is slain. Get it done. Pick a friendly Toll's companions unit that is not used to fight. Target can be picked to use a fight immediately. Okay, whatever. Squad. Five aboard, though. And then Companions. This is another Dungeons & Dragons party. Humans only? Yes, humans only. I think I wrote that. Nope, I didn't write that. But I meant that. Plus one armor human. Okay. Revisiting. City Sigmar. Battle traits, uh, one per hero per turn. Uh, move three, one attacks charge. Five up ward, strike last, strike last on shark shot. So battle traits, good. Sub factions, bad. Um, traits. AOA gives plus one to wound also in the shooting phase. Nice, maybe. Is this one unit only? Let's revisit. Um, I didn't see anything that's supposed to fight in combat in the whole army. Whoever said that first. Uh, I'm being a little hyperbolic with that. But... Yeah, I, I am being a little hyperbolic there. Um... I didn't see any, like, infantry that I want to... Yeah, missing from this army distinctly is free guild greatsworders. What are they called? Landschnecht or something like that, right? Some, like, infantry unit that's just a shit slapper. And flamboyant and cool, ideally. Like, distinctly missing from this army is something like that. 
I'm surprised that they didn't do the free guild great sorters again, like a um, a beloved, awesome thing, you know. Um, what was I looking for again? No, really. Uh, oh yeah, the trait. Trait. If a friendly city's Sigmar unit uses all out attack in the shooting phase while it is within this unit's combat range, add one to wound rolls for that unit's shooting attacks. This effect is in addition to all out attack. Okay. Is there a way to get a free double all out attack somehow? I guess you could get like a 20 man unit of fusilers or something. I mean, plus one plus one is good. It just is. No free double AOA. Um, I'll pay for it. I'm okay to pay for it. Who is the one that let me pay for it? Was that big lady? Or am I thinking of a previous army? This guy, right? Command Core, that was it. Uh, no. It's only redeploy, rally, covering fire, and counter charge. It's not AOA. So, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not allowed to pay for it. I was going to. Well, what are the alternatives, though? If the unmodified wound roll for an attack that targets this unit is a 1 to 3, it fails? No, I'm not I'm not taking heroes that want to enter combat. They're dead. If this unit charges turn, you can reroll charge rolls friendly to Sigmar units. Holy Wall, they're an 18 to this unit. Okay. Um, either loads of guns or full up on casters. How many spells do you have are, that are good? You mean like manually chain lightning over and over at 18? Is that like on the table? I don't think I want to fill up. I like, okay, so you have, you take one wizard because you need manifestations, especially in this army. You want to put, put stuff, right? You want to put a thing. As many things as possible between you and your opponent. Just put shit, right? Um, if they kill it, who cares? You want that. And then for priesting, uh, Wrath and Ruin, not impressed. Unfaltering aim, add one to hit rolls for target shooting attacks for the rest of the turn in addition if it was add one to ruin rolls as well. Okay, so we have um, we have a command trait for plus one to hit and wound. Or rather, uh, yeah, we have a command trait for plus one to hit and wound. We have a prayer for plus one to hit and wound. Both for shooting attacks, right? Um, so we want one priest at least, and a wizard at least. So Pontifex fills the priest slot. She's get she gets an unbind. That's good. Uh, I like cast out evil. It just it's essentially free shooting. No line of sight required. And then maybe something else. Um this guy's funny, but I think we're, we're trying to go two drop if we can. 
Damn, I wish this guy was good. I'm so sad. He looks so cool. Battle Mage or Warforged Mage? Probably the Warforged guy. What did he do again? Oh yeah, plus one save. Um, you know, plus one cast is pretty good though. Maybe you want that, I don't know. But I I like the Lord Castellan Alchemite Warforger. So like, Alchemite Warforger and... What else? Pontiflex Zanasty. Then, the free Ursula Major, if possible. And we stop there. So two. And then... One unit of ten... One unit of ten Cav. The Humankind. And cast 3d6 charge on it to make sure it guaranteed gets the charge. Huge impact hits. Can absorb a bunch of buffs, do something. Good save. Waste the opponent's time. And then... Uh, after that, we are playing Fuse Lighters until we run out of 2,000 points. So roughly 120 of them or something like that. Like just actually 100 Fusiliers. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Nothing else wants to enter combat. And the first line of fuselers, that's just your chaff. Like, they'll attack that. Okay. And you have six more lines behind it. Overall. Um, it started out at C. C from C. Doesn't exactly spark joy. Do that. It doesn't have a broken ability. Um, the battle traits don't fail. They're good. Uh, it doesn't have nothing to show for it. It's got a. It's got plenty of good stuff. It just doesn't spark joy, and it's m just missing big ice cream scoops of what you would think should be there looking through an army, is the best way I can describe it. And I don't really have a, um... I don't really have a, a place on the tier list for some... for something like that. Yeah, it's clear the humans are supposed to do something, and the dwarves and elves are clearly supposed to do something else for the whole army, but they just, like, aren't in there yet or something. You'd put them in B, but you like a... You like a lot of their stuff? I like a lot of their stuff, too. It's just, like, missing its Swiss cheese. Uh, the cheese part's delicious, but there's, like, holes in it. Does cities ever feel like a cohesive army? Yeah, when it was full soup, people made, like, top to bottom, every single thing in the army made perfect sense and was an interlocking uh, cog wheel in a combo machine. And it, it really did feel cohesive back in those days. But that's, you know, we discovered fire shortly after and the dinosaurs died. The book is missing reliable chaff. I think the flagellants make great chaff. Alright. It's six inch move guys that um, explode for mortal damage when they're killed. It's like exactly what you want for your chaff. Six inch move. Yeah, that's, that's good chaff. Problem is they're ugly as fuck. <laughs> and um... It's, like, embarrassing to give Games Workshop money for that model. Maybe you just play a billion drops, I'm not sure. You already forgot about the human zombies? Yeah, yeah, they're right. Human zombie elements. I mean, they explode when they die, and they're supposed to die, 
It doesn't matter if they attack or not. And, you know, they're cheap. Good work. You get 10 of them for 100 points. It's basically like you put them somewhere, your opponent kills them, and you roll a d3 and do that many mortal wounds. All right. Yeah. What more could you ask for from your chaff, right? What do you get for out dropping again? If you under drop your opponent, uh, you get to choose who goes first. And nine times out of 10, you choose your opponent to go first because the first turn sucks. Because during the first turn, you're out of range of everything and you have a bad choice to make. Either you don't do a battle tactic and so you're losing, or you like run up and try to be somewhere and then you're a sitting duck for your opponent's initial charge and the first one who could get doubled. And so you kind of have like a... The first turn is awkward for a lot of people. Not everyone. But the, the first turn is an awkward turn. And furthermore, whoever's going second in battle rounds kind of controls priority in a way. And so being able to choose who goes first is good. But... um, You could build your entire army and strategy in such a way so that you're like, look, there's no chance to it. I'm just not going to choose who goes first. And then, you know, you're prepared one way or another, maybe. I don't know. Could you make a first turn army, like just a bunch of cav and steel helms and jam the board with a 3-6 charge? Maybe. I only have 10 move. Uh, you could take an endless spell teleport thing. Yeah, you, you for sure could. You take Soul Scream, Bridge, 10. Uh, Soul Scream, Bridge, 10 human guys. Um, teleport them, 3d6 charge them. You could, like, you could Alpha Strike. I don't know if you have the damage to Alpha Strike in a meaningful way, though. You could probably kill one thing. But, you know, there's a lot to being a Alpha Strike army. Besides just being technically capable of running across the table. Um, you can, I think you can for sure run across the table and succeed at a charge in cities. As long as your spell went off almost trivially. But it also has to be like either a pin strategy that would work or a shitload of damage that would work or, you know, this and that. Being able to ignore chaff, which you can't. Um, I don't think I would try it. Everyone resigns themselves to play max regiments and then we're all back to party. Yeah, I could do it. I could I could play that army. Let's see. What did they say the maximum number of regiments is? Five, I think. I have five Frost Lords. There we go. Five Frost Lords. Easy. Zero auxiliary, too. I'm just five drop. Only five flosh. Perfect. I own more Frost Lords than that. Um, if the max was six, we're good. If the max is seven, we're good. I'm more than prepared. Doomsday Prepper on if Frost Lords ever uh, are banned or something. Five Flosh actually fits in 2K now, yeah. It would be, let's see, five Frostlord and Stonehorn, and then uh, Cat Cat. Probably two cats. Two units that can stand on objectives and just run somewhere and be a victory point thing. Because one of the problems with playing like only humongous expensive monsters is if, you, if one has to go somewhere that doesn't matter, you're phantom wasting a lot of points by having it babysit something. And so just like... You know, 140 points. Yeah. That five Frost Lords and two cats. And the two cats are 140, which puts me at uh, 1940. So we get a we get a command point too. Let's go. 
the best list in the game. You just, I always go second, or I always go first, whatever, fine. Everything's the same. The true meta. Just become out dropped and play the thing you want to play. All you have to do, like if you were going to be two drop, just pretend, hey, what if your opponent's won? And you made a worse army at two drops. Your army could have been awesome at four drops. But you got yourself into a straight jacket trying to qualify for two, and then your opponent is one. Why bother? Just play four, just play five Frost Lords. You know? Same thing. Um, Destruction Index has come out Friday, right? I believe. Um, we're gonna get some 4th edition games in here. And I'm telling you, 5 Frost Lords, 2 Cats is one of the test games that I'll be running. For sure. Um, the other one is... Um, there's a bunch of, like, cool, fun gutbuster stuff that I could try. Um, and, like, a mixture one... Uh, a realistic one where I'm trying to be two drop and let's pretend to be competitive, but I am going to try the fun stuff first, of course. Anyway, we got through three armies only. We got through three armies in five hours. I need to move my legs so I don't get like a blood clot or something. All right, I got to go for a walk, okay? Uh, I apologize, but health comes first, all right? I knew we weren't going to get through even half of it, but we eh, we got through a decent amount. I could have made, I could have rushed it, but I wanted to talk. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for stopping by on this off day. I appreciate it. Mm, I will not be streaming tomorrow. Um, um, because that's my rule. I can't stream Wednesdays. When's the next stream? Uh, Thursday this week. So, tomorrow I won't be streaming. Thursday is Rifts, where I'm GMing a game. And I got a whole production. Like, I, I think it's going to be cool. I don't know if anyone gives a shit, but uh, I hope you stop by anyway, because I think it'll be fun. And then Friday is, um, like, destruction indexes and points and stuff. It's time to build some armies. Gotta let Warhammer Weekly get the stream in. Yeah, it's actually for that reason, Latino Hot. Um, I share an audience with Warhammer Weekly, kind of half and half. And I'm not trying to split the audience, especially now that I stream on YouTube as well. It's the same platform. And just out of respect, I guess, a little bit. It's no big deal. Um, if it's like a reveal live games workshop live reveal event or something, then it can't be helped. But otherwise, you know, I can do other stuff. To play Suns, so you feel like list building won't be an issue. Um, I briefly glanced over Sons of Behemoths, and I saw you could play King Broad, Kraken Eater, Double Gatebreaker. Click, uh, you know, just clip it and ship it. That's it. I'm in. That army is pretty easy to make lists for in a fun way. All of AOS kisses Vince's ring. He's like the uncle of all the content creators because he brings people onto his show and tries to give them exposure when they're new. He did that for me. Uh, because I was featured on Warhammer Weekly, it was the only reason anybody watched my first few videos. And then I was a guest on their show a whole bunch. And so... As a silent thanks, I guess. I try not to stream on their time slot. If I can help it. Which is pretty easy, because I got a day job and shit. Um, and, speaking of, he's going to be in the Thursday um, Rifts game. He's playing a character in it. So, I guess, please look forward to that. Anyway. 
Anyway, TY, VM for showing up. Looking good so far. I'll see you guys Thursday for a big rift in. And then Friday for a big destruction army, army creation. I don't know, just a bunch of shit. It'll be sweet. See ya.